So the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and many other threats underlines that we humans really do need to understand better the ecology of infectious disease. I've worked in this area for the last 40 years and with successive research groups have explored the waxing and waning of epidemics, their evolution and the impact of control measures like vaccination. We focused initially especially on measles. It's a great model because immunity after infection is extremely strong so that we can tend to use very simple models to understand quite complex and wonderful historical data. So I've explained that measles elicits a very strong immune response after infection. However, a lot of very important infections, notably SARS-CoV-2 and influenza, um, are much more imperfectly immunizing. This often happens because they evolve new variants to escape prevailing immunity, and we see that as a big problem currently with the pandemic. I started working in this area and a lot of great people had done work particularly on influenza ecology and evolution before that, but I felt that I needed for my own purposes a, a one word to describe the interaction between the viral phylogenies, the immunity and the epidemic dynamics. So I coined the term phylodynamics. It turned out that, that this was a timely coinage because a lot of people have taken up the word and applied it much more broadly since. So I think a very important area is the question of cross-scale dynamics. Let me explain that in terms of epidemics. We really need to understand how events at the molecular scale ramify up in their influence through transmission to the population level, to global phylogenies of disease, and then, for example, how there's a loop back to the molecular level when new viral variants come along. So, so that sounds a bit specialised, but actually those questions of cross-scale dynamics, particularly if we take into account the vagaries and dynamics of human behaviour in our models, are right at the heart of humanity's attempts to attack many existential problems from pandemics to climate change to conflict and many other things. So I've drawn many lessons, particularly from interacting with, with great colleagues and, and students and postdocs. Let me give you three, and none of these will arise as particularly original, because I think we all think these are, things are important. The first is, to, to quote Louis Pasteur, chance favours the prepared mind. Often serendipity will give you opportunities, and the trick is to, to evolve the, the slightly prepared mind, to, to, to see them and exploit them. It's linked to the ability to ask good questions. The second broad point is that collaboration, particularly with new people and across disciplines, is, apart from being great fun, is wonderful in terms of uh, getting your research going. We're collaborating now with, with, with climate scientists in Princeton on the impact of what, a warming world on infectious disease. We always got on very well, but we, we didn't understand each other's language. And learning each other's scientific language is a challenge, but it's also a great fun thing to do. Finally, and this is, this is of course a universal and obvious thing, be kind. I've benefited hugely from the kindness of mentors and colleagues, and it's my duty, and I think all our duty, to pass this on to the younger generation.